imagine it's 1400 years ago. It's the night of Ashura. You come out of your tent and you see people leaving in the hundreds and thousands. For just a split second, your eye falls on the face of Imam Hussein a.s. You, Haider, then and there decide to stay, knowing 100% what's going to happen to you when the morning comes. The morning comes, you're awake, ready, come outside. Now you're the 73rd companion of Imam Hussain Now imagine on this day, with all the different events and calamities that will happen, the Imam turns to you and says, where would you like to serve? Whether it's to bring water with Abul Fadl al-Abbas salam, whether it's to stand in front of the Imam while he's praying, whether it's to guard the tents of the women and children, where would you like to serve? Wow. Any of those, man? It's a question that's, that can't be answered. Just being there is probably my answer. So you'd be happy with doing anything you're told? Cleaning the tents, anything. Anything. Uh, go and take a water with Abu Fadl. Wow. Not like Abu Fadl needed someone, but... Why help him out of everyone who was there? He... Uh, All of them were mazlumin. You know, Imam al Hussein had people who stood in front of them when he was praying. Guarding the tents, you had the sons of Imam al Hussein guarding the tents. Abu Fadl was there at one point. But Abu, Af Abu Fadl went out by himself. Uh, he went out by himself. He didn't go for war. So just that itself makes a massive difference. He went to get water uh, for the daughters of Imam Hussein, for the children of Imam Hussein. He wouldn't have drank himself uh, until every single person was, was given water. Abu Fadl, me personally, massive connection with him because um, because of the stance he took that day. No person in history has taken a stance like that, like Abu Fadl. The responsibilities that he had, uh, the pride he was carrying. Uh, Yazid offered him everything. And one of them sat, offered him an army, offered him wealth, offered him any normal human being, if they were at war, whether it's Imam, Caliphate, a King, or a Sultan, or whatever it is, the, the average human being would have probably taken that off. But the father didn't, carried on. He only had Ruqayya in his mind. So, and he went by himself, and he was stopped. And um, maybe I could have taken the arrow that went in his eye. Maybe I could have carried the water and took all the arrows. Maybe I could have stopped that person who cut his hands. No. There's just so many things that. I know Abu Fadl wouldn't have needed because he's a warrior, he's, 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 he has his dad's bravery. And religions upon religions, they confirm 
of him about his bravery, of who he is. It's a good question, though. So now I imagine you've had a long day at work. You come home, you open the house door, you walk in, you see members of your family are all frantic. Your mum's running around, your dad's running around, your brothers, your sisters, everyone's running around the house. One person's trying to prepare the fruit, another person's trying to bring sweets, another person's making tea, another person's bringing food. Everyone's excited, happy, ecstatic, running around your house. And you stop one of them and you say, what's going on, why is everyone in this state? And they turn around and they say, hey dad, someone's come to see you. So you ask, who's come to see me naturally as you would? And your dad replies, he's waiting for you in the living room. So you go down the hall, you open the door, you step into the living room, and in the living room you see Imam al Hussein Alayhi In that moment, what would you say to him? What would you want him to say to you? Uh, I'd be speechless. I think so would you and anyone else. Um, have I given enough? No. That's the answer already. That's the question already answered. Um, have I served enough? I will ask him, how come you came to see me? <clears throat> I'll ask him, <clears throat> I'll ask him what, what, what advice there's always a question I've always wanted to ask myself. <clears throat> and there's always a question I wanted to ask Abi Abdullah al Hussein. <clears throat> and that was, what advice did you say to Zainab I kept the show strong? Because any lady would have died that same day from the stress. But there's narrations that Imam Hussein spoke to her behind the tent put his hand on her chest and he gave her the Wasaya, his will. And that's the only thing <clears throat> in these narrations says that kept Sayyidah Zainab alive and strong. What was actually said? Oh, that's one of the questions I think I'll ask him. Uh, what would you want him to say to you? That he's happy with me. That's probably the best thing you could say to me. That he's just happy. He's uh, he's he's alive. You know, that I've, I've given just a tiny bit in his name. So at the beginning, I asked you about the scenario of being 1400 years ago, the day of Ashura, which one of the mini events would you like to participate in? What would you give to the Imam? Now with hindsight, it's easy to maybe say, I would help in this way, or I would do this, or I would try and stop that, or I would try and be a shield for X, Y, or Z. Now obviously today our 12th Imams among us, and some say, you know, at least Imam Hussein had 72 companions. How many companions does Imam Mehdi have? You know, some say Imam Hussein's companions gave their all for their Imam at the time. What have we given to our Imam of our time? Now, in your opinion, what have you done for the 12th Imam? What would you like to do? What do you think we should do? Well, 
the most simplest thing is man mata walam ya'lam imam zamana mata mita dan jahiliya. So the person who doesn't know the imam of his time has died, the death of an ignorant, of, the, of, the, of a jahil. So just knowing who your imam is, knowing what he, what he, what message he carries. For what reason has he been taken away? Well, there is reasons behind it. When will he come? What does he expect from us? You see, these things, nobody actually knows. Because um, uh, because there's so much that you can give to the Imam of your time, which we're not given nothing. Especially now, in this modern society, a lot of things are changing. Uh, everyone's pushing away the fact that the appearance could happen any time. And this is living the life, normal life. So what I'd want from Imam Medif, was that the, was that the question? Yeah, how, how would you serve him? How would you, what would you want to, to be able to do for him? To put his heart at rest? Anything that he wants me to do. It could be from picking up that small glass of water to whatever. I just want, like, what I, you know, being chosen by the Imam, being accepted by the Imam in that time. Because many people will see the Imam and turn their face. Mu'mins amongst them, Shia amongst them. Christians will turn in before the Shia. But that's all the Imam. He touches the right people. He touches the people that he thinks that will serve and be genuine about his service as well. Um, so, you know, just being chosen amongst them, those people is, uh, is an honor, is a blessing, is a gift in itself. So wherever he puts me, wherever his hand points, I'll be there. You know, <clears throat> All this service for Imam Hussein, all these things, uh, we're mourning with Imam Mahdi, rather than, rather than we're just mourning for the sake of Imam Hussein's death. No, because we still have an Imam that lives and mourns till this day. Some of our greatest scholars throughout history have said, in their opinion, if the Shia of the time took the event of Qadir seriously, Muharram wouldn't happen. Now some came after that and said in this day and age if we don't take Muharram seriously then we'll lose our religion entirely. So in your opinion how do you think we can keep the candle of Imam al Hussein alive for our future generations for example our children, our grandchildren what's our duty towards an event that happened almost 1400 odd years ago? You know, the funny thing is that just the other day was Istishad Imam al-Sada and um, not many people cared. It was just another average day for a lot of people in our community. And, you know, uh, Imam al-Sada plays a massive role to why we still know about what happened in Kabbalah why we mourn Imam Hussein, how we should mourn Imam Hussein, when we should mourn Imam Hussein. All these rituals Imam Sadr done himself. The walk into Karbala, the, the visitation of Imam Hussein and how important it is. The mourning, these majalis, the giving out food in the name of Imam Hussein. This was all through Imam Sadr's teachings. <clears throat> and Imam Sadr, it came to a point where when it, when it came to Imam Sadr, you know, um, if it wasn't for Imam al-Sadiq, we wouldn't know what happened to in Karbala. Because at that time, the Abbasiyya, they took control. And there was not many companions left. You know, but Imam al-Sadiq kept that fire burning. How? His rituals, his majalis, his uh, poets, his, um, you know, 
his reminder to his companions to always mourn Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein is, in Arabic we say, madloom, oppressed, more than, more than, more than, you know, a lot of our you know, historic members who, who we believe in, because Imam Al Hussein gave every single thing that he brought up, that he worked on. You know, um, his son Al Akbar wasn't married. His brother's son Al Qasim wasn't married. Uh, you know, his uh, he left one of his daughters back in Medina because she was so ill. She wouldn't have made half this trip. You know, his brother, his sister, he died knowing that his sister, who is the pride of Beni Hashim, who no one even seen her shadow, let alone heard her voice, <coughs> who was covered by Abel Fadl Abbas when she came out of her house straight into her mahmal, into her camel, into her ride. Even at that point, no one saw what Sayyidah Zainab looked like. Him knowing that Sayyidah Zainab will be dragged from her head, will be beaten, will be hurt. The children, the wives, the sisters, you know, everyone lost somebody at that day. Everyone lost a person, they lost someone they love. Imam al Hussein lost all of that. And in one day, and he gave it just like that, without thinking twice. Why? For who? For me and you. For others who believe in our madhab. Not only for the people who believe in our madhab, for the whole humanity. If it wasn't for Imam Hussein's stance, where would we be now? We'll be nobody. We'll just be. Islam. You know, we have so much detail in our his in our history. No other religion has. You know, there's no detail. You hear just the main occasions that happened. They don't actually hear anything. But through Imam Hussein's tragedy, all this detail came up. And Imam Sadiq was the one who was to give that story out. Imam Al Baqir was there. You know, Imam al Baqir was there and he even said, he said, if one of you among, was amongst us on that day, if you heard or saw what actually happened on the day of Ashura, you'll die. Of, that's how intense, that's how bad it was. We don't know half of what happened. We hear Sayyidina Raqayah's earring got ripped off and we scream. But there's Imam al Baqir saying, if you actually understood what happened in Karbala, you died. So, you know, the, the importance of carry on with these majalis is, is so important that it was passed down from Imam to Imam to Imam. Imam al Rawa used to have Du'abul, a poet, come and he used to tell him, just recite about Imam Hussein. He wouldn't say recite about my, my father, recite about Imam al Sadiq, or recite about. No, but Imam Hussein, that was the main, the main thing thing to mourn about because it was a tragedy or other Imams were killed either Masmoom that's the only thing Masmoom when Imam Ali was killed with a sword you know Imam Hussein gave everything that day and and and, and, and we can't hold him a majlis every Friday to in his name we can't come to the Hussein every Friday or every Thursday where it's supposed to have to do Ziyat Imam Hussein you can't come to one of those majlis every week you know in 10 years time uh, sometimes i sit down and fear that where are our children going to be when this society is modernizing every single day all these rituals are being taken lightly where, where is our where is our children going to be in 10 years 20 years time so these things are important we have to always uh, keep the fire inside the heart of Sayyidah Zainab Ali amongst in our hearts you know and it's important <clears throat> because in, in 10 years that time if we 
don't do what we need to do to keep it burning and teach our children of the Masaib of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. The religion evolves around Musibat Abu Abdullah al Hussein. The whole religion, the core of religion, was on the day of Ashura. Rasulullah already finished his religion. I've, I've completed your religion. Whatever you do after this, that's your test. <clears throat> I've given you guidance, a guideline. And it was going to go all to waste on the 10th of Muharram if Imam Al Hussein didn't sacrifice himself and his family. So it's important to keep these rituals going. The fire, let it burn. Have as much majalis as you can. If you say you can't afford the majalis, that's rubbish. It doesn't need nothing. A small room, a candle, a khatib, and someone just to recite what happened in Karbala. Ziyarat Imam Al-Hussein. Give thanks to Imam Al-Hussein. What do you think is all this for? Oh, 